In the darkness, we began our mission to access an unbelievable abandoned boarding school. We met up with fellow explorers CJ Urbex and drove anxiously towards the site which is located in the middle of nowhere. There's a light right there. That's a security light. It's absolutely pitch black right now. We're in a, a massive field so we can't see anything. But we're getting closer to the site and we need to be really quiet. Cautiously we entered the dark structure, unfortunately setting off an alarm as we did so. Once we found a hiding spot, we sat in tense silence as we waited for the sun to rise on the horizon so we could begin our exploration. As soon as the morning light appeared, we observed the incredible structure we would be inside for the next seven hours. The 150 acres of land the Catholic boarding school was built on was auctioned off in the 1880s. It was built by a famous architect of the time in a beautiful setting of hills and forests. You could see the impeccable detail that went into the building with small crosses dotted around every rooftop, emphasising the school's Catholic nature. The structure itself put us in awe, it is more like a castle than a school and we couldn't believe anything like it could be left to decay. In addition we could also take note of the security system we had fought earlier in the night. There is a huge list of defences at this site including this 9 foot fence ringing the structure, internal and external motion alarms, internal and external CCTV cameras and a security guard himself. However we weren't entirely focused on this as we realised there was a massive scale of abandonment to explore and we didn't want to miss any of it. Starting off with the downstairs corridors, which are gigantic in length, featuring some beautiful decay that was also featured throughout the school. The old architecture is clearly noticeable with the arch ceilings. These can be found almost everywhere and are another generally Catholic design. After getting these shots, we quickly moved upstairs because the concentration of alarms is higher on the lower floors and there was PIRs on every door frame. This wasn't a downside however because the building's magnificent style continues upstairs, probably in an even better fashion. Absolutely nothing in the building was identical, every room was completely unique in its own way. Soon we found our first chapel of 14, there was also a huge church that we will take a look at later in the explore. The building actually closed in World War I, but then reopened shortly after as a junior school. Another phase of construction began in the 1920s with the addition of sports facilities and gardens. Although this time the construction went ahead 40 years after the last, the architects kept the same style which is why the entirety of the building boasts an equal level of grandeur. It was at this point that we realised there was actually a lot of items left behind, although the boarding school has been closed for more than a decade. Remnants of the past mix well with the photogenic decay, making brilliant opportunities for pictures and cinematics.
We believe that all in all, the security system here is very good, which is the reason the huge structure isn't seething with vandalism and damage. We were very aware that in the past there are stories of others entering the building to remove explorers from the site, therefore we cautiously moved around the infinite seeming corridors keeping an eye out. We could see the security cabin in one section of the structure, so we made sure to stay low key as we explored. Altars like these are dotted around the Catholic school everywhere. To think that something so grand is just left in a rotting corpse of a building is absurd, but maybe it was simply too heavy to be removed. The decay on this specific corridor is absolutely incredible, and we can't imagine we will ever see anything like it again. Heading upstairs took us into the school's old library, which was in a relatively good condition considering the length of abandonment it has endured. The bookshelves were left to this day, although some of the shelves had given way, as well as this amazing spiral staircase. Another level up took us to a smaller library room with a ladder straight up to one of the structure's turrets. Thousands of books must have fit in this room alone. Once again the view is incredible, plus this time we can see further out into the countryside where hills seem to go on forever. You can imagine the packed courtyard with people wandering through it every day. With abandoned places like this you can't spend too much time in single spots because there is so much else to see, so we went downwards to continue but managed to set off yet another alarm. Boarding school flourished until the 1960s when enrolment began to drop. This may have been because of the ever-changing attitudes towards religion. Before 1970, adults would also visit the building to be trained to become priests. However, because of the low enrolment, in the 1980s they were sent to a different training centre in the northeast. Therefore, this structure was officially just a boarding school for boys. We found these boys' dormitories, which even still had some beds remaining. Each bed space was isolated from each other by a thick wooden partition. This long hall was decaying nicely for the eye, but not for our feet. It felt as if the wooden floor could go through at any moment. Near the 1990s some of the final students enrolled at the boarding school and in the last year running only 80 were inside the huge site. Perhaps some of their names could be found on the walls of the partitions. You can actually see the effect the water's having. As everything's start to sag, that beam and then the floor as well. 
where all the water is, is actually sinking down and eventually it will cave in. From this area we entered the observatory dome, where students would study astrology. Not much remained but it was still an unusual feature in an abandoned building and something we'd never seen before. More classrooms lied below on the bottom floor as we headed to a dangerous part of the site on search of the church. It is riskier being in this section of the school than others because there was the most alarm surrounding the church, so we left it last for a reason and kept very alert. Finally we found it and we were amazed at what we saw. The overuse of alarms made sense, as in the cathedral-like church there must have been many priceless religious artefacts trapped in the decaying void. We can't really express the size of the church hall through video, but it was humongous, with very old features like wooden walls and marble archways. Up a ladder we found a superbly preserved organ with the music still lying above the keys, gathering dust. On this note we were extremely happy with what we had discovered in the timeless school, so we began to make our way out. In terms of plans for the colossal site, it doesn't sound like anything will be happening. Just for the price of the building alone it is a huge cost, and that doesn't even include how much it would be to fix the building up into working order. We thought exiting wouldn't be too much of a worry, but we suddenly met the feared security guard. However, he was actually very nice and told us some key facts about the exploration. What what normally happens is you confirm someone's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you an hour. Right. No matter where you are to get out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When that hour goes away, yeah. phone the police. Right. Because it's dangerous, the building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They put it as a grade one, right. which is blue right. lights. They come out, they confirm that you're in. They phone the fire brigade. What, yeah. like a blue light accident's happened in there? Like an emergency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I phone 101, just because right. it's, a, it's a, a dangerous building. Right. Yeah. So, they will phone the fire brigade. The fire brigade will come out. Uh -huh. Big, massive crew. They come out, hard hats, harness, they go in the building. Right, shit. Sure. They bring you out, hang to the police, and go to the police station. Yeah. And you get done with um, wasting police time and a waste of emergency services. Right. Yeah. Nothing to do with trespassing. Right. Nothing. Realising we were very lucky with what we had got away with here, we left the incredible site with high spirits. This has been one of our best explorations yet, and we hope you enjoyed coming along with us.